singing and dancing and playing instruments that's cute but uh you have a particular path you must go on and i promise you it'll be so rewarding if you start right now you'll be light years ahead start right now in in your spiritual walk start right now go and seek and and you shall find All mystics have a story of how they found their spiritual calling and how they continue to deepen their own spirituality and connection to the universe. Let us hear their stories so that we may be inspired to continue ours. Awakening Stories Hello, mystics. Thank you for tuning in to another installment of Awakening Stories. Today, I'm joined by a woman who has made it her mission to teach others about how to perform real magic, not Hollywood magic, but genuine practices that impact the world around you based on your intentions. She's an expert in the occult, magic, naturopathy, and spirituality. She brings a fresh perspective to the occult community online, and her podcast is called The Me Middleton Show, and it explores topics that aren't always discussed on other podcasts, which I think is really important. So in her own words, the insight she brings will make you have a DNA explosion, and I cannot wait to figure out exactly what that means. We only connected recently, but I am very excited to hear what she has to say. We share a very similar mission in making spirituality practical and effective and grounded in our earthly reality. So please welcome spiritual coach Evada Johnson. Hi, Evana. Hi, thank you so much for having me, Sarah. Absolutely. Thanks for being here. Um, so I listened to a few of your podcast episodes recently, and you've mentioned that you've been doing this for a long time, uh, about 15 years or so is what I remember you saying. Um, so you've been traveling down this path for a while. Do you remember what prompted you to begin this journey in the first place? I believe mentally first and then practicality second. The two points I want to talk about real quick, the mentally leaving religion. Mm. When, when religion began to dissipate from my life, learning and reading more about the Bible and understanding and discovering the lies, <laughs> the misconceptions and some truths. There were some truths. And I said, you know what? I can't believe it because I was raised Christian in the Southern Baptist home and I'm born and raised in Atlanta, Georgia. So, you know, I'm deep in the Bible belt and my family for generations have practiced Christianity. And, you know, as I mentioned in my podcast, you better not come home with no hoodoo voodoo devil in up in my mother's house or my grandmother's house. But that's what you did. <laughs> I sure did. It was crazy. So you can imagine that life. But really freeing myself from the entrapments of, of Christianity, which broke my heart because mm -hmm. I was deep in it myself, praising the Lord, praising Jesus. Yes, ma'am. But mentally escaping that first. And then the second part, when it came to practical application, being homeless. Oh, yes. Being homeless was the catalyst to that made me get into practicality, practical application of spirituality and magic. When you need some money mm -hmm. and you're homeless, that will that will do it. Absolutely. Can I ask you what prompted you to make that decision in such a low point? Like why? Or I guess I should ask what was, what I mean to ask, excuse me, is how did you get from no longer being homeless using your spirituality? Well, I'm listening to things like, well, people like Esther, Abraham Hicks, mm -hmm. trying to raise up my vibration because I was depressed. Uh, being, you know, having a child, being homeless and everything. And I'm searching on the internet, trying to find answers that I have no idea how I stumbled upon 
witchcraft. <laughs> I've always been gifted with with sight my whole life since I was a child, but that's what deterred me from spirituality because you know the Bible said don't do that, mm-hmm. and I was scared with the things that I've seen. But I don't know something just subliminally brought me to looking at those things online, and then I saw a spell for money magic, simple candle spell. I did it, and it worked. Ooh, amazing. It works. So. so I would love to hear more about your gift of sight. Can you elaborate on that a little bit? Okay, so that is quite, um, that is quite uh, an interesting tale. <laughs> <laughs> I learned in the strangest way dealing with some cows that I'm an empath. Like and- no. <laughs> right exactly a field of hundreds of those moves um, that I learned that I'm an empath for many years I didn't know what that was but I uh my husband's a truck driver and I was riding with him for two years and he's listening on his truck radio MP, uh, NPR and I'm listening on my phone and my headphones I'm listening to don't touch me. Little John and the East Side Boys, their song, um, Get Crunk. So I'm having flashbacks of being in the club in Atlanta, <laughs> turned up, just having fun. And I'm listening to this song. And I'm, Little John has a magnificent way of making you crunk. Mm. <laughs> and, and I remember there was a part of this song. He was like, get crunk and just start pushing it. And I'm just all into it. And then all of a sudden, I, okay, we we're riding down a, a pasture, a, a huge field of nothing but cows, and it was a manufacturing uh, plant behind it in the distance. And I'm getting all excited, feeling like I'm back in the clubs of the, of the ATL, and then all of a sudden, a heavy energy of depression, like hopelessness, like no one cares, no one is coming to rescue me, that once I go into that building, I will never be seen again. That energy was immense and it weighed on me so bad. And I just remember being like this and then, and I just remember just my soul cried and I'm boohooing, so I buckled my seatbelt, ran to the back of the truck with uh, in the bunk where the beds are. And my husband looking at me like, oh my God, baby, are you all right? And I'm boohooing and I'm crying and oh my God. And I've always had those feelings, but that was the most extreme. So he pulls the truck over and he's talking to me. And at this time we're already into crystals and things of that nature. So he brought me a hematite to help ground me. And I remember... Um, he's talking to me, trying to figure out what's wrong with me. And I'm like, I don't know. Tears is rushing down. And I, we, I made him pull off and I'm laying in the bunk. Like, why did I respond like that? And then I remember I just passed my cows. That sounds like something that cows would feel like. And that's when I discovered I went on my journey trying to discover what is that thing called? And I learned I'm an empath. So with it, in, with my empathic abilities, when I speak to my clients, I could ask you to say your name a bunch of times so I could pick up um, a frequency. And all of a sudden I could tell you what you ate, who you've been with, what you did last week, <laughs> what's on your mind now, what's about to come in a minute. I don't know how, but it's this, I can hear it, I can smell it, and I can see and it's like a transparent movie when I'm able to see what's going on in the person's life. Wow. That, those are some incredible gifts. Usually people have one that's prominent. Like I am clairaudient, so I usually hear things. And I'm clairsentient second. Um, and claircognizant too, but clairaudience is my biggest one. So that's, i always really interested to hear when people are really clairvoyant and they can see things. But it sounds like you got all of them kind of all at the same level, which is pretty rare in the spiritual community. It's not something you see a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. That's um, the cows. That met, hurts my heart. <laughs> I've met, I know, right. Mm-hmm. Um, I've met quite a few talented people, but as you say, it's usually one and or the other, mm-hmm. but I have met people who have like many different gift, gifts within them of how they see and 
uh, receive information. And, you know, it, it's, I'm grateful. Yeah, it really is a beautiful gift right from heaven. So you mentioned briefly in your introduction that you always had this, but it used to scare you. So how did you overcome that fear and embrace the gift for what it is and to not be afraid of it anymore? I think I, I think I was, when I was introduced to magic as an adult, you know, through the internet and everything. And I think having the courage to practice, to light a candle and do the, do those instructions. I knew they all coincide. So I did a lot of meditation and I think practice daily and being in different experiences. Cause before, for example, there's an area of Atlanta called the West End, which is the West side of Atlanta. And I would walk down there or even downtown Atlanta, which is known as Five Points. And like, I could look at your face and I could see your beautiful face. And then all of a sudden, grr, something different pops out. And of course that'll make you jump. And being in situations, I'm like, okay, I don't want to be afraid anymore. So I'm understanding that there are different beings out there, aliens, demons, angels, and all these other different beings. I have to just make myself used to it. So I kind of went through a, a personal training session that I put on myself. And it took years. And I still find myself jumping sometimes. After all of these years, I still find myself jumping, but I'm not as afraid. I, I think just putting myself in different situations and I guess either intentionally and unintentionally when the student is ready the teacher will come type of thing mm -hmm. so situations happen and I find myself and it graduates it elevates the different situations get bigger and harder and more extravagant so yeah I think wow that's, yeah, that's so true that when you're ready, your teacher will show up. And the same is true for the teacher too. When they're ready to pass on, the student will show up. Oh, yeah. So, so did you have a mentor or was it more of a self-study sort of a thing? It began self-study mm -hmm. um, and many, oh my goodness, many, many, many teachers have come my way and taught me so many things. Wow. I've studied various paths and right and left-handed that I um, I learned later on that it was important for me to know both sides because we're both made of light and darkness. Mm -hmm. And if I'm going to be in the spiritual path, especially what I am being grown to be in, which is a spiritual leader, I have to understand, be cognizant of both sides and be able to work in both of those sides without getting lost, without getting too caught up in it, with um, control and discipline. So I've had many teachers of both light and dark, and I'm grateful for those, those yeah. teachers that came my way. That's really amazing. So that kind of leads me into another question I wanted to ask you. How did you discover that these topics weren't the taboo that Christianity tried to make them seem to be? How did you discover by, that it was safe? By oh, looking right. at Christianity. Really? Mm -hmm. Interesting. Interesting. Because Christianity, for example, the altar. We're mm -hmm. not supposed to have altars. and the, They got one biggest day in, at the church. Mm -hmm. But that's the right one. Uh, it, mm -hmm. That's what they say. Okay. Being of African descent, anybody that did to my ancestors the way they did to my ancestors cannot mm -hmm. turn around and tell me that they have a God that can save me. So when I went to their churches and they tried to tell me, oh, this is, the, especially when I awakened and learned and understood the actual history of Christianity and not just to African people, to everybody on the planet, including their own people, so everybody on the planet, um, when I learned of the truths and escaped from what the way I was raised in Christianity, 
I'm like, oh, y'all some liars. Cause so everything you're gonna tell me, I, I really can't trust anything you tell me. So if you tell me that that's the right altar and I'm not supposed to have an altar, you will lie next. And that was my that was my behavior. That was my my mindset as I grew and learned and studied. So things like that, blowing out the, the birthday candle. Wow. Which that's crap. powerful. Um, <laughs> you know, um, <laughs> things like that. Little different little things that they blatantly practice in our face. And I'm like, you tell us not to do that, but you're doing it in my face. Right. So right. I'm gonna uh, do it. A simple example of that I think of is incense, where they like incense for some reason are evil, but they do they not burn incense and myrrh at every every church I've ever Thank been you. in. Yeah. Thank <laughs> you. Thank you. I, How about they brought frankincense and murdered Jesus? That's absolutely. Funny. You know, I relate to that portion of your story a little bit. I wasn't necessarily raised like a hardcore Catholic, but I did grow up going to a Lutheran church and then I baptized myself as Catholic as a young teenager and mm -hmm. then so I wasn't really like in it deep. It was definitely more of I need a spiritual comfort of some kind. And uh, once I started to realize that it was the history that I I really struggled with, it wasn't so much the belief of something bigger or the community aspect of it or the idea of heaven, your loved ones in heaven and that sort of thing. It was just more like you're, it's more of a control method. There was no freedom. And I really needed that freedom. And a lot of the things that I did believe in, like even things as simple as yoga, they are supposedly summoning the devil. Like that's how can <laughs> right. something that's made of pure light be so, be so, so dangerous. And it's not, that's just a control mechanism. Not to say that every Christian church is out to control you, but that is right. kind of, that is what history has told us throughout right. Christian exactly. history. Mm -hmm. And I find it interesting too that, you know, so many Christians, and I'm sure you've had this experience too with your clients that, you know, what we're doing is ooh, so spooky and dark and know the devil, but they sure come to us looking for readings. Yeah, they sure do, don't they? And they're always very secretive about it. Like, uh, right. mm -hmm. and I, and I understand that, you know, when you have, you have to come out of the broom closet eventually, you know, as they, right. as they say. Um, but it's scary, especially when you're the only one, like, it sounds like you have this experience when it's, you're the only one in the family that is not in the Christian path. It is really hard for people to embrace their actual soul's calling. And they either go that way and get completely separated from their family and, or they like disconnect from them emotionally, even though they still see them and stuff, or they don't ever follow their soul's calling. And then they're stuck for the rest of however long they're here right it's really sad right. it is yeah. very sad and i mean not even just in religion versus spirituality but just in everyday life because we're here in this society and this society dictates how we're supposed to live life instead of you living your life and that graveyard is full of hopes and dreams and ideas and innovations never seen yeah but the people that are trying to control want it that way because oh, free people are harder to control. I mean, that's just the That's term. the mechanism of Christianity. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. And all the other monotheistic, monotheistic religions as well. Yeah. Just, I'm just calling it how it is. Absolutely. It takes us away from nature. And I just knew that, well, I mean, I am earth, water, fire, air. But you're telling me to, to get involved in that type of lines of thought is, is evil. The devil is a liar. We're going to go with nature. And, you know. Well, and like you already said, there's light and dark within us all. So is the darkness not the devil? Some air quotes. <laughs> and the light is God. And I mean, we have that in us all the time, which I think Christianity does kind of allude to, which is why you can't be tempted by the devil. But see, and that's the thing, these imaginary characters that they gave us that made us believe that these things are true. There's nothing evil there's evil and good are and time are these are illusions honey ain't no such thing as any of that no there's nothing people do some 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 really dark things and people do some really light things on either end is not balanced but when you get to know both of those sides and embrace both of those sides that's when you're you're reaching harmony not even balance because balance is not balanced being a libra i know Balance oh, I'm a Libra never. too. <laughs> yeah, really? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I'm October 6th. So 
and the scale is always doing this. It's mm -hmm. never even, ever. I ain't never seen it, but it's always doing this. So it's, to me, it's a harmonic dance, just like the yin yang symbol. It's always moving about in harmony, one mm -hmm. after the other. One day you're feeling great and feeling good, and next day you're sad and depressed. Another day you feeling uh, you want to help somebody, and the next day you want to slap the crap out of somebody. That is true. Um, it's so true. And you can't, nobody is pure light. Nobody's pure dark. No balance exists because like you said, it's always going like this. It really, I think to come to that realization is when the deeper awakenings begin to happen because there's this attitude of, I mean, people call it toxic positivity where if you think anything that's not of the light or in a positive way or, or optimistic in any way, you're going in the wrong direction and it's bad. And yeah, and a lot of, I feel like that does subconsciously stem from Christianity a little bit because they do in so many words do preach that if it's not God, it's the devil. You know, if it's not optimism, it is pessimism. If it's not light, it's dark. When there's in the yin yang symbol, there's the dark and the light and the light and the dark. So mm -hmm. it's always, it's always a, a balancing act. And I'm October 9th, by the way. So I'm, we're right Happy near each other. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And I know you're a Pisces moon as well, aren't you? Mm -hmm. Yep. Me too. Me too. I mean, that makes sense if our birthdays are so close together. So yep. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty cool. <laughs> that's why we connect so much. Yeah, I love it. I love yes. it. You're my sensitive people, my emotionally in tune people. <laughs> um, um, I've been told recently that uh, somebody tried to do a reading, you know, people, other people who give readings, some people, and, and I did an episode about this. Some people are into spirituality to get into spirituality spiritual game or the spiritual hustle they're not really true and they're scams mm -hmm. they're scam artists and some this there's this one person who's trying to do a reading for me and they said that um you're such a strong woman and you 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 look at crying or showing emotion as a as as weakness and blah blah i'm looking at this woman like bro i know you lying what you talking about i cried a drop of a dime and, and I think this person was really just reaching because of a lot of the fads and the trigger words, especially in the African-American community, like black girl magic and um, all these other <laughs> stupid things that they got. I, I'm sorry. I think all of that is stupid. No, no. You express yourself. You say what your unpopular opinions are welcome here. I want to hear them. <laughs> I, I really think there's nothing more than um, just empty uh, self-esteem boosters. <laughs> I, I honestly feel like that. A lot of people, my peers, they're not going to agree with that. They're probably going to come at me with pitchforks and, and torches <laughs> me about my opinions. But like, you know, this whole thing about queen and goddess and but you okay you got you're a queen and you're a goddess and all of this but who are your subjects you can't even control your own household but you're a queen stop playing where's your kingdom honey so uh you know these different things just to feel good and i understand we need something to make us feel good especially everything that's going on in the african community and people of color with everything they're out to kill us type of thing and we've been persecuted for centuries yeah and um so we need these different things of upliftment so i understand that but i rather go with truth than just fluff personally and when you know you come with these different um queen and black girl magic and all of this stuff here and i'm like hey keep it with the real and i think people look at me like you're just dark you're evil i knew you was a witch you're just evil and i'm like okay boo <laughs> yes i mean give them what they want right give them something to talk about right <laughs> they ain't talking about you something wrong that's what yeah. they say <laughs> ah. <laughs> i think that's what my publicist would say <laughs> just kidding i don't have a publicist i'm in my own publicist but they i think that's really you brought up a really interesting point about like uh specifying like black girl magic is a good example where it's helping to build a community and the goal is to be inclusive and find the people that are like you but at the same time you're still being exclusive to other people who might not resonate with that specific 
with that specific title, uh, which is fine. I mean, we, we, there's plenty of other people in the world, I guess you'll, you will attract the people that resonate with you. Mm -hmm. But in the end, it really does that label really make a difference to what it is that you're doing. And it's, and it's, don't get me wrong. It's not just like specifically black girl magic. It's all sorts of things that I see on the internet that I don't like to draw attention to because I I think it's irrelevant. I don't really like to bring up these sorts of things because it doesn't matter to me what, what identities you identify with. What matters to me is what's in your soul. And that is ultimately what is connected with me personally. So, because I believe we're all one, we're all connected, right? So our outward vessels don't, don't ma- seem to matter as much as what's on the inside and i did an episode about that too yeah um, it was great <laughs> you love it thank I you i did <laughs> thank you so much yeah. um because you know the, the environment that we're in is expected of us to behave a certain way but that's not what your soul is saying that's mm-hmm. not what's inside of you that's not what's animating your body and i say go with what is in your soul be happy you ain't got to do what all these other folks is telling you to do because nine times i mean who are they who are they people that are trying to control you or yeah. influence you at the very least tyrants thank god and better <laughs> i didn't want to use the t word <laughs> i'm a i it is what it is it so is. i had a teacher one time that taught me this when he was um explaining like the masculine and feminine energies, the light and the dark energies, right? And women, we're like, generally, not me, but generally women, when, okay, you're on a date, you're walking through the park with your guy and you see a beautiful butterfly and you're like, oh, look at the beautiful butterfly. It's so majestic. It's so beautiful and peaceful. Look at the colors. Look how it dances in the air. And your guy looks like you're, you're trying to make me woo-woo about a bug. <laughs> you just described an actual date I've had with my husband in the past. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, look, at it. it symbolizes transformation and, and change is coming. And he's like, oh yeah, it's orange. <laughs> that is so funny. But yeah, that's, that's the dynamics. Yeah. And when my teacher taught me this and I'm like, wow. But he didn't lie. It is a bug. I mean, can it be both? <laughs> I, it can't. Just like we're both of light and dark. Yes. It is both. <laughs> but we don't, we rarely look at, it's a bug. We see the beauty and the mm-hmm. colors and how it floats in the air. They see it's a bug. Yeah, that is a really good indication of the differences between the yin and the yang energies. I try to avoid the labels of feminine energy and masculine energy because yeah. simply because of the of the immediate connotations that people have with, with those yeah. terms. It has yeah. nothing to do with gender or sex or anything like Absolutely. that. Right. Um, and I know you know this. So mm-hmm. yeah, I always try to lean more towards the yin and the yang and people are like, oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. but it's, it is way. true. Though. Yeah, I got you. Yeah. yeah. So I like butterflies. I think they're cool bugs. <laughs> <laughs> me too <laughs> so okay um i am wanting to hear your take on the difference between spirituality and the occult because i know how i would define each ones and how they're different only simply from like my own experiences and reading so i would love to hear how you would make those separate terms different from each other if they are at all they're not Nice. And Alistair Crowley, to me, in my mind, Alistair Crowley proved that he was a spiritualist, but on the other end of the spectrum. It's a spiritual practice, but it's of darkness. And the reason why it's darkness and not necessarily evil mm-hmm. is Whatever because, that means. Right, whatever that means. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, it is on the other end. And if you know how to, as we spoke about earlier, if you know how to embrace both ends, it's still a spirituality. And the reason why it's so spooky and have all of these, you know, dark images and stuff is to keep the regular random people from making it common knowledge because everything and for everybody, some of these, some of the information that is in like the, the, the occult sciences should not oh lord should not be out and about it's 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 already i don't want to say bad enough that's not the right choice of words it's already 
enough information when it comes to crystals and stones and astrology and yoga and meditation. People are already tripping about that. Imagine how they would uh, behave with all the other information that is taught in the occult. Mm -hmm. And so they use these symbols to scare people away. That's all it is. And if you try to get into it, especially prematurely, you think you're ready for that type of information. Oh, it's meant to scare you away to see, you know, if you got some gumption, if you have not just courage, but if you are just truly ready within yourself and understand and have discipline in being able to learn those sciences, that's it. That type of thing is not for everybody. Not at all. And, you know, it's a lot of aspects of the mainstream spirituality, which is kind of weird to phrase it that way, are not for everyone either. Like not everyone wants to read tarot, even though they don't necessarily think it's evil. Not everyone wants to do yoga, but maybe some people do want to go down the path of the occult. And I I feel like it kind of goes back to those expectations. Like you're, they expect you to behave a certain way and you can't call yourself this without also doing this, but it's not for everyone. And they, and like you said, people dive head first, especially when they're just starting to awaken, they go, okay, so I had this traumatic experience that started my spiritual awakening and now I'm a witch and now I spent my entire paycheck and all these witchy things that I was told to have and now I'm going to study this and open up a whole can of worms and and, and invite demons into my house even though I don't know what I'm doing I'm going to play around with an Ouija board even though please for the love of God don't bring an Ouija board anywhere near you and they just they go crazy and it's not a good thing all the time it's not something you should be doing an Ouija board is a perfect example like I consider myself a medium and I will not go anywhere near an Ouija board. Like I will not touch it with a 10 foot pole. I just, I'm not skilled enough to deal with that. Although I know that some people do have a lot of success with that sort of divination tool. So not everything's for everyone. And okay, what's then the definition of success varies too. But yeah. what, what does that mean? What, and when you're successful, that you finally communicated with somebody not knowing that you opened up a portal and the whole bunch of folks just walked through there, but you didn't know and yeah. shouldn't oh. be up in there. That's really scary oh, but to you, about. But you got a message though. Congratulations. <laughs> From who? Did you even know that person? Probably Ooh. not. <laughs> Right. Right. You probably shouldn't. <laughs> you shouldn't. Right. They probably just showed up because they saw the opportunity and they saw an opportunity. Yeah. So, yeah. Just like they did in their lives here on earth. They're no different. They're still the yeah. same soul. Yeah. Oh, girl. You better preach it. Oh, yeah. Well, when I hear them talk in my voice, in my head, I, I know they're basically the same as they've always been. Not to say they're not growing or the opportunity isn't there, but you're still you when you're on the other right. side. So if you were mischievous before you'll be mischievous now and not always acting with other people's best intentions in mind yeah I mean I was also taught by my one of my master teachers that and then I understand more why people like monks are seeking spiritual enlightenment to detach themselves from the physical world why they walk around here with a bunch of rags and don't own much of you know like stuff you know, um, not to say they don't own anything, you know, but, you know, they're, they're detaching themselves from the, from the material world. It's because when you do transition and go into the spirit world, it is like a thousand times harder to release because you want that last piece of cookie. You want to have sex with that person one more time. You want to get that hug again. You want that, you know, whatever those desire, you want to t- smoke that last little puff of cigarette or drink that last little sip of beverage. And, and it'll drive you mad in the spirit world if you're not, you, you know, disciplined enough to be in a monk, getting that practice in here in this physical world of discipline. And when you transition, you don't have to worry about being stuck in a realm between um, the physical world and the next level up. There's this realm that some people call it purgatory, but those are the people who are in my tradition called it where unclean spirits live and also some of the lower entities they call them demons they're not they're just crazy people or people who don't even know that they even transition they're not even yeah. they've yeah. been walking around here for centuries and they still don't know that they track they passed away so they're stuck in this this realm between the physical and the next level up of the spirit world and they're stuck and there's people like us who have to help them transition and move on 
And just like how you and I are learning in this physical realm, having this, this experience, they have to learn and to grow and develop so that they can move on. Otherwise, they're going to be stuck there. What you just described is what I consider to be my life mission is helping those people, those souls rather, that are in that, what you might call purgatory or the lower level vibration of the spirit world that are, that A, don't realize that they're there and B, are clinging so hard to what happened in the past that they're not yet in the light of Mm -hmm. what I refer to as heaven, just for the sake of simplicity. So Mm -hmm. yeah, I mean that, I really don't know if there's a greater work out there than it is to help those souls that are stuck there, especially the ones, specifically the ones that don't realize that they're not in the physical world anymore because they're, you know, they're trying to take that last drink. They're trying to eat the food. They're trying to go about their daily lives and they don't understand. That happens a lot with people who, um, you know, die of an overdose of some kind or, or maybe it was so sudden that they don't even realize it was something happened uh, mm-hmm. and they're just kind of not clear. They weren't in clear headed when they passed away. So mm-hmm. they tend to get stuck there. And this is why a spiritual awakening is so, so important because your likelihood of thinking that you're still alive when you're not is so much lower when you start the awakening process. Your soul is almost more ready to go back to the ether because it will go back eventually. Yes. Yes. So. Yes, absolutely. I mean, we all know that forgiveness or even forgiveness. You might have some type of issue with somebody, especially maybe like family, but you might have an issue with whomever, coworker, family, friend, whatever. And you didn't let that go. And then you transition in that energy and you're still mad. And again, those, those, that vibration multiplies when you're in the spirit world, because you're not in the flesh and you can't move on and you have to be able to forgive or help lead them into that direction of, you know, leaving it alone, cleanse yourself on it, forgive and keep it moving. Oh my gosh. Um, that that is so important. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. That's something I talk about a lot is the importance of forgiveness because it is truly the most powerful thing. It really is. Mm -hmm. Yes, girl. Mm -hmm. Especially forgiveness of yourself. Woo! Say that again. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes, <laughs> so true. I mean, that's that, that is a common roadblock that I've observed of people who refuse or can't grow or souls as well. They can't forgive or they feel as though they're not forgiven. So therefore mm-hmm. they can't move on. So it's, it's a horrible thing. And a, a, something that I, every time the topic of forgiveness comes up on my podcast or in my blog post or in my books, I need to point out the fact that forgiveness is not about justifying what happened. That is not what forgiveness is. Absolutely. Not. And that's where people get stuck is that, well, if I forgive them, they think it's okay. No, first off, you don't have to forgive them to their face. You, it's an internal thing. Absolutely. And second, if you don't forgive, what are you doing? You're just, you're just holding a grudge. And does that per- eventually that person's going to stop caring that you didn't forgive them and their soul. Oh, won't. they live living their best life yeah. while you're still stuck in the past being mad about something that ain't no more. Yep. That's not serving you anymore. Right. So, yeah. Yep. That's something I try to, I could scream it from the rooftops if I could. I try to say it as much as I can. It's so important. <laughs> So yeah, you, I'm I'm in this mission with you, sis. So you you have a a, a partner in in this. So. Yay! I need one. <laughs> As you kind of touched on this a little bit, but you mentioned like first level of um, energy and purgatory and keep climbing higher. And you've also mentioned first levels of spiritual practices for us here in the earth realms. Mm-hmm. So how what are the other levels? Like what is what does that look like to you? Okay, so I I guess starting off with the first level, um, when I teach my clients or even when you listen to the Me Middleton show, basic stuff like people, there are crooks and misconceptions and scams and misguided people that think they know because they just, I feel the energy and this is correct. No, baby. Um, just like you knew when you got that Ouija board, you got the message and you didn't know you know, Mr. Charlie from 1832 don't walked up in your house. So, um, but basic stuff like setting up your altars, learning like basic stones, learning the colors and their definitions. Those are like the basic or the divination tools, understanding um, what a pendulum or, um, or tarot or whatever divination tools, the basics, um, uh, the basic herbs, the basic um, moon, understanding the phase of the moon, what they mean, the uh, 
the basics of astrology. Just get the signs down and their elements. And just get that. We ain't going to get to the planets and houses yet. You know, that sort of thing. And then when you move up to the next level is, well, I still say the first level is meditation. You your own tool first. Are you worrying about a pendulum or worrying about tarot or worrying about a, a piece of rock? You, you are your first tool. Your intentions, your powers, your gift, their understanding, your intuition, that is your first step in your tool. And then you move on to these physical things and understanding things like sigils. To me, sigils is like next level because um, that's not a common thing in my mind. Right. Candles are more common than, than drawing or creating your own sigil, not just right. learning right. other folks' symbols or other um, beings' symbols, but even creating your own. That's a whole nother like, level to me. And I think graduating from, from level to level until you get into things that even normal spiritualists would find taboo. Like you're doing what? For example, in my in my spiritual practice, I am in two different West African traditions. And my primary tradition is called Ifa, which is the tradition, the West African tradition out of Nigeria and Benin. And the other tradition that comes out of the northern regions of Ghana practiced by the Dagbani people is called Kali. Nope, it has nothing to do with the Hindu uh, goddess. It's a complete system out of Africa, the northern regions of Ghana. And in both of those traditions, we do sacrifices. Yep, we're cutting chickens. So I remember in my initial uh, walk in spirituality, the thought of, I mean, I'm, I still cringe. <laughs> like, oh no, life. Ah! <laughs> but I, I just, uh, the taking of life, it, I, I, I freak out sometimes. But I know intimately the science behind doing that we ain't just walking around just killing animals for the fun of it and and then pouring blood and stuff but doing things like if I could share a story about how I had my back healed absolutely um so there was a point in time where I'm walking my back was hurting it was excruciating pain it was my lower back on both my right and left sides and I was walking to a point that I'm hunched over like very low my knees are together and my feet are far apart and I, I feel like I'm 70 something years old and at the time I'm like 39 and or 30 something and um my husband said let's get a reading done and this magnificent brother may he rest in peace chief Amachi he oh I got a reading and he was dynamic I didn't have to say anything you know like with most diviners that might ask a couple of questions or or they ask their quarant um what it is that they want to know about and oh, i want to know about my love life or my career now th with him you don't say anything if he have a, a couple of questions it's not so much of really um digging into anything uh or he might even make it statements, but you didn't have to say anything. And he was able to tell me about my whole life. That man don't know me. And he said, oh my God, Ivina, you need medicine. You're back, you need medicine. Um, this is what we can do. So he went to telling me about all the herbs that I had to go collect. Climbing mountains, girl, to, to, to get an ax and chopping off pieces of the bark. Um, off a certain space, certain side of the mountain, off a particular tree. I mean, it, it was a treasure hunt. It was so many things we had to do. And uh, one of the things we had to do is get three or four chickens. And so we went to his home and there was a whole ritual that was performed. It was my husband, it was the, the, the diviner, the priest, uh, well, he's not a priest. He was known as a chief in his tradition. It's not a priest, but the same difference. My husband and myself, and the ritual was done. And he speaking over the chicken and what they're doing in my tradition, they're bringing energies down of a higher being. 
and and because the higher being said if you want me to do this for this particular person i need a b c x y z and one of the abcs was a chicken to put their specific energy into that that uh that bird and what flows through our body is blood the life source without blood we're dead so the life source that went into that bird so he's calling those energies down and he was authorized because of his level as chief we just can't randomly do that because we are not trying to control such heavy energies so someone like, like a chief or a priest who are uh, authorized to do so he was able to do that put but I didn't know what was going on at the time. All this stuff I'm telling you now, I'm like, I don't know what this man doing. What, this, what is he doing? Shout it. And he he cut the head of the chicken. Me and my husband both were like, oh my God, he just do that in our face. Oh my God. And he poured the chickens over the herbs and everything. And I was just really fascinated, but scared. Like, I can't believe that I just subjugated myself to this shit. What in the fuck? <laughs> I'm really tripping out. And he poured the the blood over the herbs that we gathered and that he gathered. Did a whole bunch of other stuff. Told us the steps and what to do with the herbs. And then he said, after 24 hours, bathe in it. You want me to do what? <laughs> Put some what on the who? Me? Blood? <gasps> I'm scared as shit. I'm I'm telling you. That's when I say levels, we ain't talking about simple candle magic, okay? <laughs> no, not at this point, no. At this point. So that's when we're talking about levels here. But I was desperate. I'm trying not to tear up now. I was desperate. I was in pain. And no one was understanding the pain. And go to the doctor, honey. I'm spending money I don't have in the thousands of dollars and I'm still in pain. So no. I spent like a little over $500 for that whole thing. We did the ritual. I didn't even bathe in it yet now. We left the ritual. We drove for 30 minutes to the trucking terminal where my husband was working at because we're unloading everything out of our, our vehicle to put into the big truck. And of course, he didn't want me carrying anything because of my back. So he went to carry the stuff, took it to the uh, from the truck. Uh, our vehicle to the big truck and I'm getting out of the truck so I can walk around just to you know I'm sitting in this truck for I mean uh, the little truck I'm sitting in our car for 30 minutes driving so I just want to stretch girl I put my right, my left foot out and I noticed that I'm not like oh oh when I'm usually what's been happening with, with the back pain that when I step my left foot out and getting out of the vehicle I'm usually like oh that didn't happen. I got out of the of the car and I start walking. And my country behind, I'm like, what the fuck? Michael, 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 not Michael. Michael, Michael, look at this. Look at this. He come oh on the back, like, baby, what, what what's going on? And I'm walking. Like there was no problem. I'm walking. Keep in mind, I ain't bathed in the blood yet, but I'm walking. So we had to wait for the, the herbs to marinate in the blood and the bucket of water for 24 hours. And then after that, um, for nine days, you know those plastic toasts that you get at Walmart? Like, it comes a very sad. So we had the big one. And we would go into the truck stop, take a shower without using like scented soaps like Zest or Ivory, none of that. We use black soap. And, you know, to clean off yourself, we went to the big truck, closed the curtains. We have the big bucket or the big um, container and we'll get a cup. We'll scoop some of the, I'm going to call it medicine. It's calling it blood stuff. It's just so, so close. It's, it's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> the, the medicine, because that's what they call it in, in, in our tradition. Uh, and douse myself doused myself and it has to cover you from head to toe and I did that for nine days and that was in 2014 and now I'm fine no medicine no more me western medicine I mean in certain things I still will go to western medicine I don't know if because I'm programmed but I've always been into holistic health I've always been into holistic health but when it came to like magical practices 
shouted. <laughs> so how's your back now? Um, well, <laughs> unfortunately, the brother passed away in 2018. And um, I noticed there was like a decline, but I, I see a holistic chiropractor and he's been treating me well. What it was, and this is completely my fault, he said, now that I've healed you, you need to go find out exactly what's going on and get it rectified so you won't have it happen to you again. Okay, and I okay. didn't, because, you know, out of sight, out of mind, and this pain wasn't there, and I didn't, and I didn't, so I, I didn't, and I didn't, and I regret it, and I keep saying I didn't because I'm kicking myself in the behind about it. Then he transitions, and what, maybe a couple of years after that, then I started feeling the back pain, but it's nowhere near as excruciating as it was. So I said, okay, you know what? He, he warned me. Let me go and behave and see about this. And I found out exactly what was going on with me. Um, my, my whole right side is jacked up an inch and a half oh, my whole, from foot to head. I'm wait, well, foot to shoulder rather. I'm jacked up and um, which affects my my uterus and my fallopian tubes and my ovaries, which also catered to why I was having crazy menstrual cycles, like bleeding a month at a time. Oh my God. Yeah, oh girl, I, I could go on about these crazy medical things that I've had happen, but because I finally obeyed him and, and took his recommendation, finding out what's going on with me and I'm rectifying it now. So, but if it wasn't for him, I don't know what would happen to me now. And that was back in 2014. So I do have a question about that. You say you uh, used the medicine for nine days. How much medicine was there or were you reusing it? Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, so, <laughs> it, you know, the paint buckets, the big okay. paint buckets, it was yeah. that much worth. And it was enough for both me and my husband. Just one like paint bucket size? Right. So and like I'm, a gallon or so? It was like a five gallon bucket. Okay. Oh my yeah, gosh. It five, yeah, it was five wow. gallons. And it wasn't again it was enough for me and my husband and um and it's not like I'm just scooping dudes get some more do it's like a certain number of times so what we do we get like a a bowl full and it's, the bowl is probably as big as the cuff of my hands right mm -hmm. and uh I get like a little cup so it's, it was just easier for me to like just scoop because first of all it was cold so I didn't want to do the whole dish and then I feel like I'm not covered enough. So I can a little bit cover my head to the shoulders while I'm going, oh, because it's so cold and things like that. So I make sure I'm, I'm covering everything, even my private parts to in my legs and everything, make sure everything is covered. And wow. the, the residue was left over, you know, the after it covers me and that hits the, the bottom of the container that I'm standing in bathing in, we'll take it and we'll just dump it out into the, back to nature. Wow. That's incredible. Um, that is a whole new world for me. Never heard anything. Quite, I mean, obviously I know that sort of thing exists, but that is not a story you hear very often. Cause like you said, that's even in the spiritual world considered taboo, but I mean, there's certain ways like psychic medicine and psychic surgery. These things are very real and they help people. Obviously it's no replacement because it never is like even your practitioner told you to go get some medicine or go see a Western doctor, Western uh, civilization doctor. So yeah. it's crazy how they integrate with each other, you know, and the effects that they have. And even though it, you say you still have some pain, it's not nearly the same as it, as it was. Oh, so no, it didn't no. necessarily eradicate the entire problem, but look how much of a difference it still made many years later. That's insane. I can't believe that. Also, I, I can't believe that because I would never be able to do that. I have a horrible fear of blood. I would never be able Ooh. to do that. <laughs> but when you're desperate enough mm -hmm. and, exactly. when, and what's, what's in your pockets, if you can afford to go to the doctor, let them cut you up and create another problem while, they, while you're thinking they fixed one problem, there's something else going on in your body and then you spend, keep giving them money. And, and, you know, we all know the medical industry is rigged, especially when it comes to prices and all of that. I want to get into them, that. No, but, that's a whole podcast show in itself. <laughs> exactly. But if you got the money and, and the insurance and, and stuff like that to go get yourself fixed solely at the doctor, run it. But I didn't. 
and I was in excruciating pain and I wanted to walk again. Walking, that was very important for me. <laughs> and um, to walk the way I did before the medicine, I was desperate. I'm glad it's better now. Thank you. Yeah, of course. I have one question left that I wanted to ask you that I ask all my lovely ladies that come on to Spiritual Awakening Stories. And that is, what would you tell your younger self about your spiritual awakening if you could? Well, if I can go back and talk to Mimi, that was my nickname growing up. When you're in the hood, as you say. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. That's where me Middleton's from. If you listen to the very first episode. Yep, of that's episode, where I learned it. <laughs> yep, Mimi. So, <laughs> When, yeah, when I was in the hood and I went to a performing arts school and that was crazy about the arts. So I'm not saying instead of focusing on that, but if I can go back to Mimi and tell her singing and dancing and playing instruments, that's cute. But um, you have a particular path you must go on. And I promise you, it'll be so rewarding if you start right now. You'll be light years ahead. Start right now in, in your spiritual walk. Start right now. Go and seek and, and you shall find. Um, go into your spiritual walk. I actually I wrote that down because I, I, I wanted to specifically say that I would tell my younger self to not give up. Look at the spiritual systems of your African ancestors way before slavery and restore your family's position. That's what I would tell my younger self. That's powerful. I just got chills. Your African ancestors are with you, and I'm sure you already know that. Yes, I, can, I get that message, so I can I can sense that with you. And your bright and beautiful soul, even though you have the darkness in there, too, as we oh, talked about. <laughs> yeah, you, of course. So how about you let the world know where we can find you online and learn more about your amazing occult podcast? Well, you can Google search. <laughs> so the Meet Middleton Show. A place for neo spiritualists to laugh, love, and learn as we speak about spirituality, magic, naturopathy, and the occult on first levels. When you're not on the you're not the special guest on the next episode of Charm. So I'm gonna snatch you out of that fantasy. And if you're ready for true spiritual practice, I know it all from Wicca to Luciferianism to the occult sciences to hoodoo, voodoo, ifa, uh, palo, um, all type of different various paths. I, we, we talk about on the Me Middleton Show. Google search and listen to it on your favorite podcasting um, uh, channel or vehicle you can also reach me online at my website if you're interested for consultations or if you want to pick up some merch or you can still listen to the me milton show on my website at www.helpbyevena.com that's e-v-e-n-a-h you can also go email me at helpbyevena at gmail.com and you can look me up on Facebook. You can look for the Me Middleton Show on Facebook, on Instagram. It's just plain old Me Middleton. And questions, comments, concerns, likes, improvements, uh, birds, if you want to flip me off, they'll <laughs> all. Be up. I don't know if you want to invite that in, but you do you. I mean, <laughs> if you don't like it and you want to tell me, I mean, not all, uh, not all attention is good at attention, but it's still attention nonetheless. Especially so in the eyes of those algorithms. <laughs> if you let me know, you just listen to the Me Middleton show and I thank you kindly. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much for being here, Avina. It's been an absolute pleasure and a joy and really moving. And I can't wait to connect with you again very soon. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so honored and, and truly blessed to be on your show. Thank you so much for having me here.